I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. Uh, welcome to our first hands-on, without touching, uh, Zoom technical meet. And what we're going to do today, instead of being super vehicle specific, we're going to be talking about basic electrical concepts and testing. Uh, you know, continuity means pretty much what it says. That means from this point to this point, it's connected. It's good. Now, with resistance, the bigger the wire, the less resistance. The smaller the wire, the more resistance, okay? And that's how it works. Let's just start with this, this bowl right here. And let's see, it's probably gonna be hot, but it's not. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my test meter. I'm gonna go back to the other the voltage ohm, and that's a diode there that this thing actually tests diodes to. I'm gonna change this to the alien, the ohm sim symbol. Get my leads back on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the resistance in this bowl. We'll start with that. So what I've gotta do is, is touch this lead. Now one thing, first before you test, I always forget this, is you touch your two leads together to get your base so I've already got four to six ohms resistance just in these wires. And the leads are kind of old on this, so that's part of the problem. But you always test to make sure you're on ohm meter, okay? And we can, I will touch this. Actually, with your fingers on a really sensitive one, you can get a reading. So juice, this meter will push a very, very low voltage through whatever you're testing just so it can get a reading. So it's reading through me right now at a very low voltage. And what's funny is I can touch both of these, right? And I'm not getting a shock. But if you're touching something <laughs> and a motor runs, okay, and you're touching that wire, you will get a little bit of a jolt. Okay, so let's test the resistance of this bulb. So I'm gonna try to do this without touching what I'm testing. So one, one lead goes to the end, this is the other. So that's one ohm resistance. That's why it's so bright. The higher the resistance, the less current flows, so the dimmer the bulb. So let's check this test lead that was giving us issues. Remember we couldn't, it wouldn't light the bulb. Now it's, first of all, I wanna let you know that as with a battery or any electrical connection. If you look at this, it's kind of charred and it's dirt. Um, you will get resistance if it has to go through charring and dirt. If a connection is loose and it carries a high current, just such as a battery cable or a starter cable, those are high current connections. If they're loose over time, they will arc and char and if they're loose, what you're doing is you're putting resistance in there. So what happens when you put resistance in, just like a bulb, it gets warm. So the more warm the heat, it'll, it'll just, over time, it'll make that connection worse and worse and worse. So on anything on a car that you're working on that has extra resistance or a terminal or a cable connection, you want it as clean as possible and as tight as it can be so it doesn't move. So let's just see why I'm having problems with this. Let's see how this test lead checks that. It's open. Oh no, there we go. Now we're getting an ohm. So what we have probably is just a bad connection. She can't make up its mind. See how it goes intermittent? See that? Now it's open, now it's not. Now it's open, now it's not. Imagine that in your wiring harness buried someplace in your car, causing an intermittent fault. Okay, wrap your head around that. That is what mechanics run into all the time, where a car will come in and say that this is, you know, the customer will say this is not working. It's intermittent, but it's not working, okay? So for the mechanic to find that phone, first of all, it has to act up typically, and it has to act up long enough to be able to access it to check the circuit. 
And one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning, you cannot do a continuity test, which is you're checking the resistance with anything connected. So you have to isolate the circuit. In other words, this connect both ends of the wire that is in suspect and then check the continuity. And as you can see, sometimes it's got got continuity and sometimes it doesn't on this one. So you, uh, they call it a wiggle test. Sometimes you've got to wiggle the wiring harness. You see, all, all of a sudden you start to get a continuity. Then you know somewhere in the harness you've got a, either a broken wire that's just touching every, every once in a while. And the same thing happens to bolts. Okay, they've got this really tiny little wire in there. It's tungsten or whatever materials they use. And it's, it's even tinier than this. And what happens sometimes where a bulb, and I've done this at Concours and even on cars when I'm checking them out, the bulb's not working. I go up and I slap it. All of a sudden it starts working. So what's happened is you've got two pieces of wire that were not touching. All of a sudden they're touching again and it works until they're not touching again. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Paul here. Uh, it might be interesting just to kind of clarify uh, continuity. Um, I, I don't want, voltage drop can be tough for people to understand, but just because you have continuity doesn't mean the wire is good enough to carry the, to carry the amperes or the voltage could be a broken wire. It just means there's one, str especially stranded wire, it only means there's one wire making connection. So I don't know if there's, uh, that's something worth talking about. I have a while with. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll deal with that right now. That's, that's perfect. So what he's talking about is sometimes you will have a wire and most automotive wires are multi-strand so there's like this one probably has eight or nine little copper wires inside all within that sleeve and sometimes you'll have a bunch of them break but one is still making connection okay so what we're really talking about is a voltage drop right now and what that means is sometimes you can use one of these multimeters and you can check your voltage everywhere on the circuit and you have good voltage. But as soon as you try to turn that item on, it still doesn't work. And that's because that single strand of wire cannot carry enough electrons to fire up that light bulb or whatever else. A window motor is a perfect example. Uh, these most of these cars are shadows and the spirits and spurs. They have small wiring to the windows and they all go to the switches, which all go to one ground and all these micro switches. So each time there's a switch or a connection, there's a potential for a drop in voltage. Just so you understand, when you take water out of the dam here, you got to keep putting it in so it fills up and has the right pressure voltage. So that's what an alternator or a generator do. So the alternator puts juice back in and it helps maintain the voltage of the battery. So at the alternator, I had 14.1, perfect. I went down to the starter. There's a big cable that comes from the alternator that connects with the starter, which connects to the big cable going to the battery, which feeds the starter and the rest of the battery. So that junction right there, remember I talked about loose connections and heat building up? I checked the voltage there. And it was 14.1, okay? So then I went to the next step on this system. And on these later cars, they came with the battery switches in the trunk, it's at the front panel of the trunk, and it's a simple switch. And that is a big switch. What you've got is a big fat battery cable coming up to one side, and you have another big fat one coming out going to the battery, and it's a big switch. So I checked the voltage on both sides of that. And we had a, at least, I forget what it was, at least a half a volt drop on that one connection. Because what happened is when I got back to the battery and I was checking the voltage on the system with the car running, I was only getting 13 volts back then. I had 14.1 on the alternator. So it's not, it's not getting all the water back into the, the dam. So I changed that battery switch and I got, I got almost the same voltage. It's like three tenths off. Uh, now back to our voltage drop. This DVOM has a great feature, and I'm still trying to figure out how much, how I can do that on this. So let's let's hook up our light, and maybe we can 
duplicate. How do we have this? We have the animator. And I can't do that. Well, we'll try that one. See what that one does. That was a great question, by the way, because that's a real common problem. And that's why I don't like testing fuses or anything else with a DVOM. I like to use a test light uh, and operate with the, the item. So what do we got here? We got to put this. Let's go back to our ammeter. It's going to start warning me again. I'll do that. Let me go back over here. Okay, so now we got that working. So doing a voltage drop, you have to have your meter on volts, which we do. We have it on, this is on amps, so I've got to move this down to volts. And let's see what happens here. Let's see if we get a reading here with the battery. Always test your tester. No, see, it's not working with that on volts. I'm not on the right. Oh, I'm on amps. So now we're down to nine volts here. This battery's dying. This is okay. This is being replaced, this battery. So if we start checking the voltage down the line, so let's say we want to see if there's a voltage drop between here and that connection. We put the negative on the negative side and we read the voltage on this other side of the connection. So we got two tenths of a volt drop right there. See how it's reading? This one right here is reading 0.2, right? There's a two tenth volt drop right there. So let's go to the next section and see what we're reading over here. By the time it gets to the bulb, we got a, when it's going through the ammeter, we got a 0.35 volt drop. Okay, and let's go through the bulb. Let's see what the voltage drop is there. It's eight volt drop. So now we're on the ground side of this, or the, um, Actually, we're on the feed side. So that's why we're reading. Actually, we only got eight volts to there, right? We have oh, right about the same. So the, the accuracy of that meter is not real good. So we're, we, we got a good, good wire there. When we get to the other side of the bulb, we're going through the bulb. We got a, or the feed through the bulb, to the bulb. We got a 3.33 3 .33 voltage drop between this point and this point. And that's where you can run into perhaps a multi-strand wire that's down to one strand. Perhaps dirty fuse connection. Perhaps dirty or loose or corroded wire junction. Perhaps charred contacts on a micro switch. So that makes it a little more complicated. But the volt drop test is a really good way to isolate the circuit provided you can access all those points on the circuit. Luis